Hey guys, today we're gonna to be checking out the Evergood CTB26, codenamed Phoenix, which is a collaboration between Evergoods and Carryology. And I was really excited when this was first announced as I had such a great experience using the CTB35 from Evergoods. My biggest wish was that they would release a smaller bag with that same pocket layout that I could use as a daily carry. And so the CTB26 was designed with that in mind to give you something a little bit smaller that could still be used for minimal travel with all the cool pocketing updates that were made on that bag. So very excited to have a chance to test this out over the past couple of weeks. One of the questions that I always get with regards to these collaboration bags is, you know, why film a video on this as it's really hard to get after the fact. You can only purchase them on eBay or on the Carryology Facebook group. And really, I just like to make these videos to kind of show the bags in case people are curious to understand what the hype is around these collaborations to just kind of see it in action get a sense for why they're a little bit higher priced. And I'm also making this one in particular almost as a plea to Evergoods to release this bag as part of their regular line in their 840D Ballistic. You know, something smaller with this pocketing layout is something that I think a lot of people would enjoy. So hopefully the video is entertaining or helpful. Before jumping in, if you're new here, welcome. My name is Danny and on this channel, we love reviewing popular travel and everyday carry gear. If you like these types of videos and you'd be interested in seeing more, please consider subscribing as it helps the channel out a lot. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and jump in. Kicking things off with the aesthetic, the appearance here is going to be very similar to the CTB35 that we looked at a while back. The biggest aesthetic difference will probably be in the fabric, which we'll take a look at in a second. Um, but you know, same sort of silhouette. Uh, it's a little less boxy than something like the CPL24, so I really like the shape that that gives the bag. It's, and it's still got the same sort of minimal vibe that Evergood's products are well known for, which I've always been a big fan of. It just gives it a ton of versatility to go into any environment, whether you're taking this into the office, exploring a city, traveling, or even taking this into the outdoors. As far as the materials, the bag feels very solidly built. The exterior fabric is a VX42X pack, which has become common in some of the collaborations that Carryology has done with a few different brands. We saw this with the Kaiden collection that they did with GORUCK, also with the original Phoenix, which was a CPL24 in an X-Pack fabric. And to me, this is a fabric that has held up very well with any of the bags that I've used it with. I really like the amount of weather resistance that it adds to the bags. It also is a little bit lighter than some of the other fabrics, such as 1680D Ballistic Nylon or 1000D Cordura. This is still not the lightest bag by any means because there's a ton of features and padding which we'll be going through. The bag actually is quite heavy even when it's empty, although you don't really feel it that much in my opinion when you're wearing it. Um, but you know, really great fabric. You do get that X-Pack kind of texture, which gives the bag a little bit more of a distinct look. Um, and so it's just something that really feels like it's gonna hold up very well as part of the collaboration, they've also added Hypalon to the zipper pulls and at different points throughout the bag. And then you also have AquaGuarded YKK zippers all throughout. I really like the inclusion of these AquaGuarded zippers as it always feels like it gives you a little bit more protection against the elements. One thing that I've heard a few people mention with regards to the zippers on this bag is that they can tend to get a little bit stuck, particularly when you're coming around the corners. And I have noticed that um, in various portions of the bag, particularly if it's not as you know filled out. Um, but it seems like something that is getting a little bit easier as I've used the bag more. So I'll keep an eye on that. In general, it hasn't been a huge pain point for me, thankfully. Um, but if you're planning to you know, purchase any bag with AquaGuarded zippers, that may be something that you'll want to keep in mind. Continuing along the outside of the bag, I was very excited to see that you have two external water bottle pockets. This was one of the coolest things that was added to the CTB35 that's still missing from the CPL24 is these you know, awesome water bottle pockets that Evergoods has become very well known for with their Civic Half Zip series. You know, they offer plenty of space. Even when the bag is packed out, I was able to comfortably fit my Yeti 26 ounce Rambler. Um, so that fit in there without feeling like it was really overstretching the compartment. You could probably squeeze something a little bit bigger into there, um, but for me, that's big enough. And then, you know, the material just feels super durable, like it's not gonna tear. You have a cutout at the bottom to provide you with some drainage if you happen to get caught in some rain or if you have a spill. And then because of the elasticity, I like that this pulls the pockets close to the bag when they're not in use. Next to one of the water bottle pockets, you also have a nice carrying handle and you have one at the top as well. These are the typical kind of Evergood style handles that feel like they're gonna be very kind of durable. They're a little bit rigid. They have plenty of, you know, kind of support to make you feel like they're not gonna tear, but they do have those kind of harder edges. So they might not be the most comfortable over a longer period, but still really great to kind of have a handle to be able to carry this by its side. 
And then you have a few attachment points near the top where you can you know, use this to hold something like a hand sanitizer or a, a hero clip or something like that. And then on the front, you have the Evergoods kind of signature patch area. And it has a custom patch that's specially made for the Phoenix release. So it's a very interesting patch that has the Karyology logo, the Evergoods logo. Um, so I really like the you know kind of uniqueness that that adds to the bag. You can, of course, remove this, replace it with your own patch or not use a patch at all if you prefer to have a kind of more minimal aesthetic. One more thing I want to call out while we're talking about the outside of the bag is that because this has a pretty flat and wide bottom, it's actually able to stand up well on its own, which is one of those features that's becoming a little bit more rare these days. Um, but I was really impressed that, you know, even when I had the bag loaded out in a variety of configurations, as long as the weight was balanced pretty well, I was, be I was able to put it down and access all of the pockets pretty easily. As far as the capacity, the bag comes in at about 26 liters, which is a really versatile size in my opinion. I'm a big fan of bags in this size range as they work well for everyday carry and minimal travel, which was the intention behind this bag. I've used it in both configurations and so far it really has felt very nice. I was able to hold all the items that I normally like to carry with me. I still had some leftover space and it didn't feel overwhelmingly big when it was packed out. I like the slim silhouette that it maintains and it was able to just, you know, feel really great regardless of whether I was, you know, going into crowded areas, jumping onto public transit or carrying into any domestic or international airline. Taking a look at the straps and the back paneling, so far the bag has been really comfortable to wear. I'm generally a fan of Evergood's harness systems. I really like the amount of padding that's been included on the straps. They're really comfortable right out of the box. On the inside they have a similar fabric to what's used on their newer back panel so it's going to give you some added breathability and then these straps also have a nice width to help prevent the bag from digging into your shoulders when it's a little bit more packed out at the top of the straps you have the contouring that evergoods is so well known for in their harness system so it really hugs your shoulders nicely and then you have these little pass-throughs here which are going to pair with a hydration bladder so you can pass the nozzle through and then you also have an adjustable and removable sternum strap to help distribute the weight. Moving into the back paneling, this has also been really comfortable. It has the same type of layout that we saw on the CTB35, the, the new version of the Civic Half Zip, and the CPL has also been upgraded to this newer back panel, which adds a lot more breathability than their prior versions on their bags. So it has this kind of fabric and air channels and elevation that's gonna provide you with a lot more ventilation. And then it also just has a nice amount of padding distributed all throughout. One additional note on the back paneling is that the company has added this new style of luggage pass-through that's gonna be great for resting this on a suitcase while traveling to save some weight on your back. Jumping into the organizational options, you have a nice variety of pockets all throughout. The CPL24 for a long time had kind of my ideal pocket layout as far as offering a variety of pockets that were easy to use. When the CTB35 was released, that kind of set a new standard in my eyes and I wanted nothing more than that same layout in a smaller package, so Evergoods really delivered here. One of the best additions was this quick access pocket along the front, which offers plenty of space and dedicated volume so you can use this comfortably. It's not gonna be as large as the one on the CTB35, but it's still able to hold a lot of different types of items that I might normally wanna grab throughout the day or more importantly, while traveling. Jumping into what I currently have here, I have an anchor wall charger along with a cable for my tablet and my laptop. And then I have a deck of playing cards. I have a little manicure set that I normally like to have with me. Next to that, I have my GoPro, and then I also tossed in the Tom Ben Ghostwell pouch that I normally have with me that has, you know, dongles and other small EDC accessories. One little nitpick that I do have with this front quick access pocket is that when you close the zipper, there's a little bit of a gap here all the way on the corner. It's not a big gap, but if you get caught in some rain, there is a potential for some water to sneak in, and I really wish that they would have included a zipper garage similar to what we see in some of the other compartments throughout the bag. On the front of the bag, you have another quick access pocket that has a vertically oriented zipper so you can swing the bag around and access this area without taking the bag all the way off. One change here uh, between this and something like the CTB35 and CPL24 is that the lanyard with the carabiner has actually been moved to this area. It was actually this way with the original CPL24. It was then moved to the top quick access pocket now it's back down here, and I think it works well in this use case. It's a lot easier to access this compartment while swinging the bag around, as I was saying, so 
this, these keys are probably something that you would be grabbing a little bit more regularly. In my case, with the carabiner, I just currently have a Gerber shard attached. Um, and then on the inside, very similar layout to what we've seen before. So a nice amount of space, even if you don't use the internal organization, just to kind of lay flatter items here, such as a notebook, or in my case, I have my Kindle e-reader there. And then on the inside, you have some slip pockets. Up at the top, you have a slightly slimmer pocket, which is gonna be great for kind of more EDC type items. So I actually fit both my uh, flashlight in there, a little flashlight that I like to have with me. And then I also have a Fisher Space Pen. And then next to that, you have a slightly larger slip pocket, good spot for your phone, your wallet, or in my case, I have a portable battery there. And next to that, you have a zippered mesh compartment so you can see what's on the inside. And, and currently what I have in here is a lightning cable uh, to charge my phone. At the top, you have the same great quick access pocket that Evergoods has had in a few of their bags for a while now. So this is always a spot that I absolutely love, particularly when I place the bag down next to me so that I can easily reach down and grab some of these frequently accessed items. So currently what I have in here, even with what I have in here, you can see there's some leftover space, but since I distributed everything throughout the bag, didn't have to pack this out. I just have my sunglasses with their case, and then I also have my Apple AirPods. The next area that we're gonna be taking a look at is the laptop compartment, which has a nice big zipper along the side, aqua garden. You do have the zipper garage here, so it really feels very well protected against the elements. And then I like that because it's so big, it's gonna be easy to use with a larger device if needed. Uh, you have a padded sleeve here that is meant to hold up to a 15 or 16 inch MacBook Pro. Currently what I have in here is my 13 inch MacBook, but you can see there's some leftover space at the top. This sleeve is well padded and it's suspended off the bottom of the ground on all kind of orientations. So it's gonna be protected even if you happen to place your bag down a little bit harder. And then you have this strap that's gonna help keep the device in place. Um, and so pulling my device out, now the compartment empty, you can get a better look at the inside. One of the nice touches that Evergoods has added in their bags is you have a Velcro patch here where you can actually attach this strap so that it kind of stays out of the way if you prefer to have quicker access to your device. On the inside here, there's no sort of fleece lining or anything like that. It does come up a decent amount, so if you have a larger device, it should be able to squeeze in there. One thing that I've always kind of wondered about Evergoods bags is because the sleeve is connected to this kind of larger area of the bag, Sometimes it could press up against the screen a little bit. If this is really packed out, if you have some bulkier items, kind of wish that the sleeve was on the other side. That would interfere with the removable frame sheet that you have, but I don't know, just something to keep in mind as you're loading and packing everything out. If you have a larger device, it might start to be a little bit of a tight squeeze, but in general, with the padding that's added here and the fact that this is suspended, it really feels like my device is gonna be very well protected while I'm running around throughout the day or traveling. In addition to the padded laptop sleeve, you also have a pretty decent amount of space here if you wanted to place something like a tablet or maybe some documents or a folder. And then you also have access to the pass-through that's on the straps if you wanted to store a water bladder here. Moving into the main compartment, you have a nice clamshell style opening so that you have plenty of visibility into the bag and to make it a little bit easier to pack everything out. And so at 26 liters of space, this is able to handle many items very easily, especially with this kind of simple bucket style layout that we have here. Always great for the types of items and modular packing that I typically do. And so jumping in at the moment, what I have here at the top is my Beats Studio wireless headphones. Next to that, I have a packable rain jacket. I have the Evergood Civic Access Pouch, which is one of my favorites for working remotely. Then I have my DJI Mavic Mini with its hard shell case. I have a full-size moleskin notebook and then I also have my Levitate portable standing desk. On the back of the compartment, you still have the elastic sleeve that Evergoods has included in a lot of their packs. Uh, this is always a good kind of divider if you're you know, wanting to store some of your clothes, maybe some shoes. Uh, in my case, I actually use this as a tablet sleeve because this material is a little bit softer, so it feels like it's gonna add some level of scratch protection, um, and it just keeps my, my tablet separate from other items in the compartment. Um, and then you can get a better look at the bright orange lining that you've probably been seeing as I've opened up different areas of the bag. So you, know, you can see it in its full glory here, adds a lot of visibility so you can easily find whatever you need to on the inside of the bag. And then one of the changes with this version is that you have this really cool pocket at the top, which has replaced the webbing that was on the CTB35. This still has you know, some, some laser cut kind of molly type areas where you can attach things like a carabiner or, you know, EDC items, you clip on a flashlight, a knife. 
Um, and then the pocket itself is actually really functional. It doesn't have a ton of elasticity. The volume is pretty fixed, but it's enough space to hold you know, tech accessories. In my case, I just have a charger for my laptop in here that was able to fit comfortably. But this is also meant to hold Evergoods, the Civic Access One pouch, the one liter pouch, which I didn't purchase, but I found that it also worked quite well with something like the GORUCK Wire Dot Mini or some of the other smaller pouches that I typically use. And then with the space that's offered here, this is definitely gonna work well for minimal travel as was intended by the designer. So I was easily able to toss in my larger double-sided packing cube, a dop kit and an extra pair of shoes and use this for a longer weekend trip. On the lid of this main area, you have two additional zipper pockets, very similar layout to what we saw on the CTB35 and as always with Evergoods, these compartments are very nice to use because they have their own volume. They're leader independent, as they like to say. So you have this larger sort of mesh compartment here on the bottom, which is a good spot for pouches and you know toiletries when you're traveling, uh, maybe even some clothes, underwear, because it's able to squeeze in there and it's gonna come out as opposed to inward. In my case, I currently just have here the Tombin HLT pouch just to kind of show showcase what could fit in here. Uh, but you can see there's really a ton of space for other stuff that you might wanna keep separated from the main area of the bag. And then at the top, you have the Evergoods and Carryology Phoenix logo here. So specially made for this version of the bag. And you have an additional zippered pocket, which again, just more space for any of those items that you might you know, normally wanna have with you maybe something a little bit more sensitive that you want inside of the bag as it doesn't have the mesh. And currently what I have in here is uh, some band-aids with ointment. And then I also just tossed in a field notes notebook. Then you have two slip pockets in this area as well. I didn't really place anything into this left one here, but it would be a good spot for maybe a portable hard drive or you know a mouse. That's actually what I put in the one next to that, which is a little bit wider. I have my Apple Magic Mouse, um, but just a nice variety of pockets in this main area and throughout the rest of the bag really just checking off all of the boxes for what I would look for out of an ideal EDC and minimal travel bag. So many great features here. I really love the aesthetic, the durability, and you know, I really hope that Evergoods sees the feedback for this video and includes this as part of their lineup going forward so then more people can experience this bag. And so to wrap up, it's been a great experience testing out the Evergoods CTB26 over the past couple of weeks. The bag cost about $450 upon its initial release. Unfortunately, this isn't a bag that's easy to get on Evergood's site. After it was initially released, it will likely have to be purchased on secondhand markets such as the Carryology Facebook group or eBay, and the pricing may be a little bit higher. Um, and at $450, it's definitely a premium bag. It's for you know bag enthusiasts who really want to invest a lot of money into their bags. It's a very well-built bag. It has excellent features, very unique. For me, it's definitely worth it. But there's also gonna be a lot of other great bags in this price range or for less that are gonna be worth considering. And so as I was testing this out, the first bags that this reminded me of are of course some of Evergood's other offerings such as their CPL24 and the CTB35. Both of those are really fantastic options. This is almost a middle ground between those two options. The CPL24 is one of their most popular daily bags, really excellent layout, comfortable harness system. It was recently updated to include the same back panel that this has in a new fabric. It's a great, more compact EDC size. It still gives you enough space for minimal travel. I really love the pocketing layout at that. It doesn't have some of the additional options that this has. It doesn't have the luggage pass through, but still a great option. And then of course the CTB35 has pretty much the same layout. It doesn't have the internal pocket um, that we saw earlier in the video, but very, very close, just in a larger package. It also includes a built-in waist belt. And so really great one bag option if you're looking for something durable with a subdued style, um, that's gonna be fantastic to consider. And if you like Evergood's aesthetic, you're not really super, crazy about getting something like this that's an X-Pack or the specific CTB26, then I definitely recommend checking those out. The next bag this made me think of is the GORUCK GR2 26 liter, which is a bag that I've really enjoyed using over the past year. I chased that bag for a long time as it used to be really hard to find. It seems to be more readily available on GORUCK's site and it's a great balance between GORUCK's more minimal GR1 
and their GR234 liter, which is a great one bag travel option. Like this one, it just kind of sits in the middle, provides you with extra organizational options and capacity while working as a daily carry bag or minimal travel bag. Very ruggedly built as GoRugs bags are. Really great laptop compartment. I love that it has two fully clamshell style compartments that just makes it very easy to organize everything, particularly if you use packing cubes or other modular pouches. It's just a phenomenal bag. It's been great to use. It doesn't have some of the additional features that this bag has, such as the external water bottle pockets or the luggage pass through. But if you're looking for a very rugged bag or if you're a fan of GORUX products and you want kind of the ideal in between of the GR1 and the GR2, then that's gonna be a phenomenal option to consider. Another bag this made me think of is the Alpha 1 Niner Evade 1.5 Full. We featured the Carryology collaboration that Alpha 1 Niner did, the Stealth Cobra on the channel a while back. I really enjoyed using that bag. Like this one, just a very fully featured bag that checked off a lot of the boxes for many people as far as ideal backpacks go. Comes in at about 24 liters, so in theory it's a little bit smaller than this one, but it was a pretty big bag, um, so they're gonna be able to hold a similar amount. Clamshell style opening, lots of organization all throughout, water bottle pockets. Uh, so really nice balance of features on the uh, Stealth Cobra. It also had the X-Pack fabric like this one. You can't easily purchase the Stealth Cobra as it was a collaboration, but the regular Evade 1.5 full can be purchased on Alpha 19 or site. It's offered in a variety of fabrics, and that is just a really full featured bag, even if it's not the collaboration, a great option if you're looking for something that's gonna be you know, versatile, that's gonna give you plenty of space, durability, and comfort, and that's gonna be a great option to consider. And then the last option that I'll mention here is the Air Travel Pack 3 Small, which has been one of my favorite bags of the year. Like this one, it is kind of an ideal larger EDC or minimal travel bag that offers a ton of functionality. It's very well built, super comfortable harness system. It's offered in a variety of materials. You can purchase that in X-Pack if you want. Comes in at 28 liters, so it may give you just a little bit more space than this bag here. External water bottle pocket, luggage pass-through, suspended laptop sleeve, all of those same kind of things that I called out during this video, it's gonna come in at a lower price point than this one, it's actually readily available. And so if you're just looking for a really, really well-built, versatile bag that can be purchased from a website at this time, then that's gonna be one of the best options that I can recommend. With that being said, the Evergood CTB26 holds up really well against all those options. It's a very versatile and well-built bag. It is extremely pricey and it's gonna be even pricier as you try to find it on the secondhand market. But if you're looking for a bag with these particular features or you're just looking for something really versatile and durable, it may be worth the investment. For me, it definitely is one of my favorite bags of the year so far. And I'm curious to hear what you all think of the CTB26 and the Carryology collaborations in general. And if there are any similar options that you think I should check out, as always, please let me know in the comments. And I want to thank you for watching and supporting the channel. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming videos. And we'll see you in the next one.